It's amazing, like, like, <laughs> wow. <laughs> People who are passionate about Brown team, they call it the heart of democratic South Africa. We're building the public city. And so what does that mean? It means getting local residents, people who really care about our city, to participate in designing it. Brampentine is really unique. It's got this really useful population with the universities and it's critically become a space where we all coexist because there's an energy and that energy really is the youth of South Africa rebuilding uh, the post-apartheid city. So in this workshop, we're first working with the students here to redesign this public space in Minecraft. Then we're going to take the Minecraft designs and we're going to put them into a mixed reality environment. It's basically a way to display digital objects in the real world. This allows you to see it in 3D. Like, it's, um, you sort of see it live before it's there. So Bramfontine, as it continues to develop, is really exciting, really vibrant, really puts forward a future model of the city of Johannesburg. But at the same time, it really exemplifies many of the challenges that we face. The only way we can solve these enormous challenges that exist in the city of Johannesburg is through collaboration. And I think a program like Block by Block really is at the cutting edge of inviting collaboration. One of the fantastic things about Minecraft is that it's a really accessible tool that people that have absolutely no architectural or design training can very quickly come up with ideas for how to improve public space. At UNA Habitat, we think that mixed reality has a huge potential for urban planning, urban design and architecture in the, in the future. It's going to be a new way of displaying digital content, like architectural designs, in the real world. It's going to be a fantastic way to do community engagement. So this makes it easier for you, like, when you have a vision and you can still change it, it's easier to make adjustments. I think the issue that you normally get around the world is how government sees communities as something that they need to provide a service for without understanding that if we all came together and sat and had a conversation at the table, you would not only need to be providing these services for the community, but the community can start taking ownership of spaces and these services themselves. And it's not a destination where people can actually sit. There's issues with uh, muggings, so there's a lot of safety issues. So I think once those get resolved, I think this will definitely improve uh, the usage of this public space. It makes a big move to look like this, but then it's way more just <laughs> <laughs> What we're doing here in Johannesburg together with the uh, UN Habitat, JDA and WITS University, that's like the, the first test of our mixed reality platform. So we're kind of experimenting here and we didn't really know what to expect when we came here, but uh, it's been really interesting to, to see how it, how it worked with the people walking around in the street, viewing their Minecraft creations out in reality. And, uh, it's been great to see their excitement. What we've done, we have a laser scan, this is the, this corner. And then we align the, the, the Minecraft model of this corner with the laser scan. And then we clear out the model, the Minecraft model, so only the, the things that the users have built here is still in that OBJ file. The phone, we can align the scan model with the real world. What it looks like is like the real buildings and trees are including virtual objects that are behind it. My role here uh, in this project is to kind of incorporate Minecraft proposals that the, the, the participant, different stakeholders has made to like a kind of a real 3D model as to kind of mix it to the, the mixed reality. So it's been brilliant. So yeah. 
and they need to take ownership of the place in which they live and, and work and play. And if we can mainstream this kind of co-production and public participation and urban communication, when people start understanding the sociology and the economics behind all of these things, uh, we're going to get that sense of ownership of cities. So this is really the kind of thing that, that I'll, I'll be looking at in the future too, to make sure that we can bring it into our planning processes.